right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Steady Wealth Podcast, where for the most part this year, we're talking all about different strategies that uh, we find interesting to educate uh, you, our listener. And one of the things that, of course, it was just a matter of time until we start talking about you know, ETFs that essentially use, at least in part, AI or artificial intelligence. And so with me today is Rebecca Wild from uh, Stocksnips. She's a managing director over there in Miami. I told her it looks very Miami where she's at right now. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here today, Rebecca. Um, maybe just give us a, a quick sort of uh, background on where are you at, how you came into this, and then we'll start talking about uh, what you guys' strategy is, which I really find fascinating. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Serge, and uh, excited to hopefully add some value to your audience listening. So um, as you mentioned, obviously here, I am Managing Director at Stocksnips. And what Stocksnips is, we are an AI-powered model portfolio model portfolio and ETF issuer. Um, so we're using, you know, very, very advanced AI behind the scenes of the portfolio construction and management process. Uh, we're founded by some of the world's leading AI and data scientists. And we really wanted to bring that level of AI knowledge and expertise to the financial domain, specifically investment management. Yeah, gotcha. And so you mentioned, you mentioned the fact active. ETF. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff to, un, to unpack here. Um, and then we can start talking about the AI stuff and what that actually means, because I think there's a lot of initial, initial confusion on what that could mean or maybe even going forward. Um, but let's just quickly touch on the active ETF part. Like there's a whole world out there of active ETFs. It's becoming larger and larger by the week, by the day, probably. Um, give us a quick description of that and, 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 and how you kind of fall into that before we start going to the AI part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, what we're seeing is, as you mentioned, active ETFs are kind of the new phenomenon. Um, I think most people are very familiar with passive ETFs and typically a passive ETF is an ETF um, that tracks an index. So, for example, we're very familiar with, you know, SPY or VU. These are S&P 500 uh, ETFs. They ultimately track the S&P 500 index. Um, the difference with active ETFs is they are, you know, for the most part designed to outperform a kind of passive index fund um, or benchmark. And the way that they are designed to do that is actually by taking more of an active approach in that it's got frequent rebalancing. Uh, fund managers are the ones who actually go in and select the different equities. It's basically not just tracking your standard index. So there's there's a lot more behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, in, in the world of uh, active ETFs, you're going to find, you know, very quantitative approaches, systematic approaches, um, you know, very niche strategies that, you know, just aren't your kind of broad uh, market uh, index fund. So, yeah, there's there's a lot out there. But what we're seeing is um, the active ETF space actually as of kind of September this year, it just surpassed about one trillion in assets under management. So we're seeing a big shift, um, especially as we see this transition from mutual funds. A lot of the mutual funds are now being uh, transitioned over into active ETFs. And the benefit of this is obviously tax efficiency, uh, liquidity. So it comes with an enormous um, range of benefits to have active ETFs within your portfolio. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, it, and that's an interesting point you bring up there, too, about mutual funds making that transition over to ETFs. I mean, from the fund itself, as you say, tax efficiency, but from the client's point of view, you know, everyone's nowadays so used to be able to just put on a trade, basically. So, uh, you know, the daily li or the minute by minute liquidity in that sense, of course, um, comes into play. In fact, I was talking to another uh, ETF provider just uh Friday or Saturday, and we were talking about how he was uh, primarily running an SMA, separately managed account, for I think something like 25 years, and then they opened it up as an ETF, and it just you know, sort of opened up a whole different world for them and for the clients to be able to access that. So Absolutely. really it's fascinating. Part of the reason we got into the active ETF space is we were also running you know, SMAs, <clears throat> and the challenge is when they are frequently rebalancing, 
you know, especially for retail investors, but also for financial advisors to have to go in and make these changes in the portfolio, you know, daily, every week, every month, every quarter, it's a lot to ask. And this is where, you know, the ETF vehicle, it's kind of that buy and hold menta mentality, but you're yeah. still getting access to the frequent rebalancing that's done by the, by the advisor right. or the sub advisor. So it's done itself within the ETF is what you're, is what you're saying. Right. And, um, and would you just quickly say this to us? So a lot, and this is, kind of a side note, but it really, I think, ties ni nicely into this. You know, when, you, when we talk about something like the strategy you guys are doing right now, I mean, ETFs have been around now for probably 30 years almost. I'm going to say 25 plus to be safe. Um, and it's really fascinating to think about the, the opportunity set that individual investors now have to invest in strategy that before they never had access to uh, at a very cost efficient, uh, in a very cost efficient manner. And so I think that is a huge benefit. Uh, I will say uh, it's very important to still have like an investment advisor to guide you on these things. I always think that's a big and important part. Um, but still, just that you just can literally hit a button and execute it yourself is something that I think the peace of mind there kind of comes into play pretty, uh, pretty, pretty significantly. Absolutely. So that's active ETFs. Now, the second part to unpack, and I should I should say this, um, I'd like to share my screen. The company is Stock Snips, and I'm just going to share the screen. It's more for sort of, so there's something else here um, to kind of display as well, make it a touch more interactive. And I'm gonna quickly share uh, my screen here. I'm just gonna show you fact sheet just so we can kind of uh, uh, present that. One second. Um, but the, the second part to, to kind of um, uh, talk about, I think, is the whole notion of AI, which, you know, right there, that probably just got a few people sitting up in their chair as we mentioned those words. Tell me, what, what does that specifically mean for you? Because what's not the case here, and I should say this up front, is that the ETF necessarily invests in AI in companies that are sort of somehow are involved in AI, right? Uh, it's, 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 the, it's sort of the, the stock picking behind is AI driven. So maybe Go into that yeah. a little bit, I think, because I think that's really, truly, truly fantastic. Yeah, no, there's there's a huge difference. I think, um, you know, we've we've kind of been very familiar over the last few years of uh, thematic ETFs or thematic model portfolios, and the, a lot of them have been geared towards AI. What these thematic plays do is they invest in companies like NVIDIA, Broadcom, all of the, you know, benef benefactors of AI. Um, what we're doing here at Stock Snips is we're actually using AI behind the scenes. And what you'll find is, you know, you're seeing, you know, an example of our holdings here, but we're actually selecting a very broad range of US large, mid and small cap equities. Now, the AI and the reason why we write AI powered is because we're actually, well, back in 2017, just to give you some context, uh, large language models really became popular. So Google kind of put out their open architecture BERT model. And that's when we really saw the rise of computing power and how capable it was to deal with enormous volumes of data. Um, my founders' backgrounds have been extensively in AI. They boast over seven decades, um, but included in that is actually actually a lot of expertise in natural language processing. Um, so you're seeing a lot of that now with the chat GPTs. However, chat GPT is generative AI. So that's a, that's a different uh, section that I'm happy to discuss further if it's relevant. But what we're- No, that would be fantastic, actually. It, it, I just think it's important yeah. to just kind of make clear, and, and I'd love to talk about the future as well afterwards but yeah. i mean just the fact that we now have you know the ability to use at least in part artificial intelligence to help us assist us yeah. you know making investment decisions and it's you know i think sometimes there's people who are scared that it's just gonna run wild and have no you know precedence in terms of what could happen you know i don't and i guess that's part could be something we could touch on but i think it's at least the fact that uh, that is there is an assist is already yes. very helpful to me yeah. Well, the the core reason why we, you know, the hypothesis that we initially set out to solve is this belief that what people say about stocks drives price. OK, yeah. so, you know, sentiment is not new. It's been around for many, many decades. If you go back to kind of the early days of Wall Street, you would get your stockbrokers go into a coffee shop in the morning, you know, discuss certain equities and then they would go on and trade it on the on the stock exchange. 
The same idea exists today. However, we're now inundated with a huge volume of news from financial media sources that we as humans simply cannot keep up with. Okay, so what we've basically done over the past seven years is we've built our own AI platform, which is actually equipped to ingest an infinite volume of news. So on a daily basis, just to give you an idea, we're ingesting about 50,000 news media articles from reliable sources. <clears throat> uh, so think of kind of your, you know, CNBCs, your Motley Fools, Seeking Alpha, Barron's, Associated Press, all of your re reliable news uh, content we're getting every single article and we're going line by line to determine, is this sentence positive or negative about a particular US equity? Mm -hmm. And what we end up with is basically a score, um, a sentiment score for all 5,000 US equities. And our fund actually holds the equities that are trending the most positively in sentiment based on the news. And what we've done is we actually did some validation with some Wall Street equity research firms, um, also some um, some large quant hedge funds. And we found that our signal is a leading indicator to price. So capturing sentiment or capturing this kind of 360 degree view of what people are saying about equities is actually proven to precede price movement in the market. Now, we kind of wanted to monetize that for advisors, and this is why we created our funds. So our strategies will hold at any given time, the top 30 equities that are trending the most positively in news and are statistically likely to experience a price increase over the next 30 days. That's my next question. So 30 days is roughly your time horizon, then I guess this would be a, a summary in that part. Yes, for the ETF yeah. strategy. Um, and the reason for that is this has actually got a bit of a quality tilt. Uh, we actually apply some guardrails um, before we apply sentiment, but we do have, for example, a pure all cap, which rebalances every week. So the sentiment, because it's uh, a larger spectrum, um, it's even shorter lived, but we also have strategies and models um, that you know, the sentiment starts to decay after about 90 days. Uh, so really it, it depends. And that's why yeah. we have a suite of strategies um, to suffice that. Gotcha. And they are all in the ETF. And I should say that the, the ticker symbol for the ETF, by the way, is NEWZ. I should have said that before. Um, so do you, is, are the multiple models in, in, the, in, the, in the ETF or? No, the, the, we have multiple SMAs and we converted oh, gotcha. one of our SMAs into an ETF, which went live this April. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about this, you know, like, and, and again, if you just, if you just think about this as like, what's the benefit of having a machine scan all these articles of 5,000 stocks, like there's yeah. no way you and I could sit, you know, do this together in one day or even yeah. <laughs> a what, quarter. What we're finding, obviously a lot of investors, you know, we, we wake up in the morning and we, you know, we might get through five articles or five, you know, news publications, and what will happen is we might make very biased decisions based on what we've read, which is a small, yeah. tiny fragment of what's out there. So this is one of the, you know, at least we believe the most core competencies of AI is dealing with huge volumes of data and being able to understand it real time and make actions uh, very quickly upon that. So it's, it's something that we believe humans can no longer keep up with. Um, so by no means, you know, do we position this as, <clears throat> oh, this is your core kind of SPY type holding. This is really nice as a satellite strategy, something that can complement maybe one of your, your more core allocations. No, I, I certainly would agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Diversification is still very important. Um, you know, if you think about this sort of news, you know, the, 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 the analysis you gave before, maybe think of the first Wall Street movie. Did you see that one with Gordon Gekko? The, the original one, the 80s, I think, I think it came in 87. Did you see that movie? I, I don't know which one specifically. I've watched Okay, well, the first lot. one was, it was, it was, the first one was with, um, uh, with the Gordon Gecko guy and, and uh, one of the main people who listen to this will remember. And uh, one of the, the sort of highlights was the sort of the things that gets quoted is when the newspaper essentially, um, Michael Douglas was, was playing the, the main character, um, was uh, the newspaper was kind of leaking that, um, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, 
Blue Horseshoe likes Anacott Steel, and Blue Horseshoe being basically Gordon Gecko, this big Wall Street player. And so the point is, it's news, yeah. right? And so the AI machine will pick on that on, up on that. So, and you know, back then it was a matter of looking at, you know, a newspaper article. Now it's a gazillion different feeds from yeah. you know Reddits to tweets to whatever, right? Yeah, there's no we- way we can get with that. Yeah, I agree. And uh, to, to to your point about Twitter and Reddit, obviously, that is a, another segment of information that is very potent in some cases. Uh, we actually did some analysis on Twitter and Reddit and other social feeds for one of our large hedge fund clients in the past. And what we found is the signal is very, very short lived. Um, no. So it may have a useful life of, you know, a few minutes. So unless you're intraday trading, on a very, very fast basis. Um, it's really, really difficult to get any arbitrage from uh, social feeds. Um, so that's why we stick to our reliable vetted content sources. Um, we go kind of behind paywalls as well. So, you know, even content is very expensive nowadays. And this is something that we're able to kind of share access to, um, to a lot of investors. I love it. I think it's great. It makes, it makes a ton of sense as far as I'm concerned. And again, we're not talking about, you know, investing in AI stocks, although I'm sure you guys will, will have AI stocks in there just because it came up on the screen, right? But, um, but I think the concept of having, of having a strategy that we as human beings probably can't do just because of the amount of data to go through um, is something worth considering. And again, obviously, we're not giving any investment advice here. This is purely educational. Um, but to me, this makes a lot of sense. In fact, when you and I met, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, I think it was, you know, and you told me this, I, I started researching and, and, and so I'm, I'm super happy that we were able to make it here on the podcast. Um, you were concerned about adding value before. I'm sure there's already tons of value being provided here. Uh, so thank you for this. But is there anything else you would like to add? I mean, one thing that I was thinking about is when you look forward, right? Mm-hmm. And and I guess the, the future here is kind of up to anyone's imagination. Um how do you see this evolving? If any thoughts? Yeah, it's it's evolving as we speak. Um, obviously, if we look at you know, there's about what four thousand ETFs out there right now. Um, there's about a dozen of AI powered ETFs, and what we're seeing, I think we're going to see over the next kind of three to five years that increase exponentially. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the big guys, the likes of BlackRock, JP Morgan, they have yet to come out with kind of an AI powered approach. However, we do know they're working on something in house. Um, So I think it's, you know, the the thing you have to look for when you're considering this type of strategy is really who built the AI. So the same way, if you're vetting an ETF, you're going to look at the brand, the reputation of the firm, you might do some research into the PMs and how long the portfolio managers have managed the fund. When it comes to an AI powered ETF where really the the PM is somewhat, you know, an AI or machine, you have to look at who built the AI and do they have the right credentials and expertise to actually, you know, stand up to that claim. So in our case, obviously, our founders, um, you know, they they absolutely live up to that. But you'll find a lot of financial uh, firms will start to get into this space. And it's just important to make sure that you're reviewing um who built the actual AI that's actually going to go ahead and do this uh, stock picking process on behalf um, of, you know, the, the human. So I think it's, it's definitely an exciting space, you know, technology can do things that we as humans cannot, or we might have inherent bias, um, which is a huge problem. Obviously we know when it comes to investing, even the best, you know, PMs in the world, we carry bias everywhere we go. Um, So they might do a great job at limiting that, but there will always still be some. Um, You mentioned just before about kind of hallucinations, and I just want to kind of make the the segregation there that when you look at things like ChatGPT, they are in the world of what we call generative AI. So they're taking existing content to then create new content. Now, this is where there's been some skepticism because that's when we can find hallucinations. 
So the old content can kind of be transformed into new content that may not actually be factual. Mm. Um, in the case of stock snips, for example, we're ingesting content that exists, but we're not trying to reinvent the wheel or create new content from that. We're taking the content as is and creating our own signal that can be used as a factor for portfolio construction and management. So we're not trying to kind of regurgitate it in a different manner. And that's why you see some hesitation about technology and kind of the outputs that come from uh, hallucinations, perhaps. Um, and things of that nature. So uh, quite important for people to understand that generative AI is a completely different beast to many of the AI powered strategies that you'll find out there in the market. Right, very important. So if you're listening right now and you didn't fully get that, maybe rewind 20 seconds or so and listen <laughs> to that again. I think that's really, really important. Well, Rebecca, it's been a pleasure. Um, I think this is eye-opening. I mean, for one, it's an active ETF, which I know a lot of people are always interested in. I believe in these things as well um, as an asset class. But then, of course, the AI component on top of that. So um, have a look at it. NEWZ is the, is the ticker symbol and the company's stock. Sips again, this is none of this is done with any you know paid promo. I'm not paying Rebecca. She's not paying me. It's purely educational. Uh, Rebecca, great pleasure. Thanks so much for joining. And hopefully yeah. we'll speak again soon. Thank you so much, Serge. Pleasure.